All right, welcome back to Kimchi Rednecks. We haven't put up a video in a couple weeks because, well, we kind, we kind of... We kind of overdid it, overscheduled ourselves, and just haven't had time. We ran short of time, so we decided to, hey, we'll take the month off. But we found an important message for you all. It's cold. Today, especially, <laughs> little screenshot here. Uh, it is, as of last time I checked, minus 9 degrees Celsius. That is quick redneck math, about... 14 or 15 degrees. Here, I'll, I'll help you right now. Oh, she's, now. she's got it in Fahrenheit. It's 14 degrees Fahrenheit. And the wind's blowing, so... Which makes it even colder. It cold. If you've never lived somewhere where severe cold is actually a thing, granted, this ain't North Dakota cold. This ain't Alaska cold. But it's still pretty damn cold. But also there are differences in cold. There's like a wet cold. So South Carolina winters, I hate. They may, it may not get below 30 degrees there, but the humidity is so high that the cold makes your bones hurt. I hate it. Contrary to that, here it's 14 degrees outside, but it's a dry cold. You walk inside, you take your coat off, you stamp your feet, and you're good. It's a whole different thing. So we're going to give you three tips from the doggos, how, how to help your winter cold and winter blues, and five... Four winter, or five, I don't remember four, which. Yeah, I think it's five. Five tips from us. On things that you might want to think about or living you, in might, Korea. you might want to have if you're in Korea and you're not used to cold winters. So, they really cold. Minion's first tip is lots of sweaters and blankies. As you can see, this is Blanket Dog. She doesn't leave this spot. Or any spot that you can pile blankets around her. The more blankets, the happier she is. The more sweaters, the happier she is. The May May's tip. Are you ready, May May? May May's tip is more snuggles. All the cuddles. This is our snuggly, cuddly dog. Is it your cuddles? Is it your cuddles? Yes. She will snuggle wherever she can get snuggles. And that is important for her. And then there's sucky dog, old grumpy dog, who's... Her, her thing is grumpy. Be grumpy. That'll keep you warm. Anyway, so on to the human tips to remember. So like in most places, like when it gets below freezing, you want to make sure your pipes don't freeze for your water in the house. Right. So if you're from the country, you've heard this one before. We, we were told this growing up. I've been doing it all up. my life. But when temperatures get below freezing, pick one, well, one tap, unless you've got like a really long place or something, and then a tap on each end, and you just set it to a slow drip. Just a drip, drip, drip. It doesn't have to be much. It just has to be enough that if... The water gets cold enough to freeze, freezing water expands, so you have to have something to let it push the water out, otherwise it fills the pipe up and the pipe bursts. Oh, hello, Shooky Dog. There's Grumpy Dog. Korea, as much as I love living here, has a reputation among a lot of people as being like the land of good enough. So sometimes the building code or, or the building's not quite to code, the pipes can be a little too close to the exterior wall or not insulated enough. And uh, yeah, they will freeze, they will burst. And, but to be fair... When I was living in Seoul, I saw a whole street shut down because the front of a building, all the facade came off because the water pipe burst and was blowing water everywhere. To be was, fair, that could happen anywhere that it can. is built that way. Right, it can happen anywhere. <laughs> it can happen, it's happened in the States, I'm sure. But even Koreans will tell you, you know, like, make sure your stuff's dripping. <laughs> so, all it's of a my thing. Korean friends sent me a message, make sure your water is dripping. They all did that, so. So, just a thing to remember. We're going to migrate to another area and give some demonstrations. Mm -hmm. All right, first thing we're going to talk about is dressing for the cold. Feet are very important. I hate when my toes get cold, and I most especially hate when my feet get wet. Now, we are not sponsored by anybody because nobody cares about us, but... But they should freaking sponsor us. Melissa loves these Vessies. So we got some of these boots. What are these called? Storm something? Stormburst. Stormbursts. And as much as I like to poo-poo on things that you buy on the internet, these actually work pretty well. The, tra these, the traction on these the is actually better than, than my custom-made boots. Yeah, the these traction actually... on these are really good so far. The ice versus Vessies is Vessies win. Um, we'll report back later on that. But so far, the Vessies win. But also, these are waterproof and... And windproof, and that helps keep your toesies warm. They also have, like, this outer layer here that really does keep your toes a little bit warm, warm. But you still might want a double sock or wear really warm socks with them. I prefer to wear really warm socks with them. But we would definitely recommend these for winter wear. Again, not sponsored by Vessies, but Vessies, call me. Um, I am a we, fan. We'll, we'll work something out. 
I am a huge fan. Next thing, keeping your neck covered. That's a Korean thing. I've every at least Korean women, every Korean woman I've ever asked about it, or as like you put your jacket on and whatnot, they tell you to cover your neck. I personally have always hated scarves because you either got to like wrap it around your head four or five times, and you got bits hanging everywhere. Or you got to do like that big knot thing in front of your throat and then you can't zip your jacket up. Or you're trying to tuck it over your shoulders and then you wind up choking yourself on something. Wow, you and scarves really I, have me, a very bad we, history. We, me, I have a bad history with scarves, yes. Yeah. I am sure these are not a new thing. They're probably much more of a ski culture thing or something. But they're very widely available here in Korea. And it's like a little neck gaiter. But instead of what I think of as a neck gaiter, which is that really thin material that you put under something else. This is, yeah, this one's a fleece, or I've got one that's like a double layer, like wind resistant outside, fleece inside. Important thing to note, you wanna put it with this side up, that way you make sure you can cinch this in a little tighter if you need it to be a little bit closer to your neck. If yes. the neck on your jacket is loose, because um, one of the jackets I have, it's, it's got a gap and the wind gets in it and whatnot. I mean, you just take one of these, pull it over. You can use it as face shield, if it's really cold and windy, or you can just put it up on, on your chin or under your chin or whatnot, and then cinch your thing there, and this will close the gap on your jacket. Keeps you nice and toasty. I, of course, am an infinity scarf girl. One thing to note, if you're wearing infinity scarves, if you have some of this like cable stuff, they will hook in earrings. But I like an infinity scarf because I can do what I just had. My ears will also be warm, and so is my neck. And I can also move this up a little bit and block more wind if I need to. But yeah, in the winter as a woman, you just expect your hair is always gonna be a mess. We've got two more, but they're outdoors. Well, so I'm, I'm gonna do part of the explanation indoors because it's cold outside. And I wanna spend as little time out there as possible. All right, so we're gonna explain. Number four is batteries and diesel engines. So in Korea, cars with diesel engines are quite common. They are apparently, at least in the bigger cities, like Seoul and Busan and whatnot, trying to... Remove them. Not necessarily remove them, but trying to incentivize people to go either with a EV or with a regular gas engine. But out here in the country where we're at, diesel engines are everywhere. Now, a regular gas engine, like in my Subaru, isn't that big of a problem because a gas engine has spark plugs. Spark plugs ignite the gas, engine turns over, you're good to go unless your battery's dead. Diesel engines, however, do not have spark plugs. They work on compression explosion, which means the starter has to turn the engine over multiple times to create the compression to get it going. That will drain a battery very quickly in very cold weather. So if you don't want to have to chase somebody down and get a jump off from another car, you can get, ah, this is our older one, but these little jump packs. You just charge them off the wall outlet. You take them out there, you hook it up to your battery. All right, let, let's see. This is the older one. When you buy one, you want to pay attention to the cranking amps it provides. This one, I think, only provides, I think it was 190, which is good for a gas engine because it's more than enough to get the spark plugs to fire. It will not last very long on a diesel engine. No, you can very easily run it out. Um, while you have that in your hand and it's accessible, just a quick note, when you're putting that on, red goes first, and red goes to red, or if yours yep. doesn't have red, it's the positive. Red to positive, black to negative. But put the red on first and the black on second. When you're done and you take them off, reverse order. Black comes off first, then red comes off. And never let the two of them touch. Just yes. in general. If things start sparking, you have done things wrong. Yeah. Now, this is one we bought much more recently. So, A. Which we can put you Amazon links to both of those. Yeah. A, this is much smaller. It's a lithium ion battery instead of a lead acid battery, so yay for that. It's got little, the prongs are detachable, so you, you plug them on there. This also is 350 crank amps, so this is much better for a diesel engine, because a diesel engine is just a big hunk of iron designed to contain a continuous high compression explosion. We're gonna go outside and show you, so we'll see you outside. Yes. Oh no! My car won't start this morning. What do I do? It's cold out here. And I don't want to sit out here all day. Right. So first thing we're going to do is pop the, the hood. Done. Done. All right. All right. If you guys can't hear the wind, it is very windy and it is very cold out here. Let's be quick about this, Chuck. Thing, of, thing of note, always be careful with the struts 
when it's really cold, the compression and the struts can go down and you might put the hood up and then let go of it and it might start coming back down. Don't don't bonk your head. Like Melissa does. All right, so here you see... That one's got the plus, that's positive. It's also red. Yeah, it's also red. And so that makes that one the negative. So, so. we're gonna hook red to red, black to black. All right, so female question, because we might have some females want to know. Does it have to be right there? Can it be on this? Does it any, make a difference? Any part that's metal that's attached to that. You will occasionally get sometimes the, the grips are too big, especially like this. It won't fit inside that little plastic bracket. You may have to attach it to the nut on the side there, or you may have to come in at an angle to get the, the metal around the post. But you want to make sure it's attached to metal. Yeah, as, as long as you're on part of the metal that's on the, the post side. You don't want to be over here. You want to be over here. Okay. All right. All right. So now for this particular model, we're going to hit the power button. Make sure it's on. We've got a full charge. Then we hold down the boost until the light turns green. And then Melissa goes and starts the car. All right. Let's check this out. See, see how rough it's running? That would have been hard to start. We did it! But uh, our little battery pack will save the day. Every time. Right, so we're gonna give you one final tip and then we're gonna go back inside because it's cold. Okay, last tip, calcium chloride. De or ice melt. Or ice melt. Depending upon where you are, your apartment may or may not clean the ice and snow off of the roads or off of your even driveway which can make it very slippery and very dangerous for you. Yeah, if you can see it down there, we got some, some ice on the crust yeah. down there. Makes it a little fun getting into our parking lot. So I keep one bag in my car, one bag in his car, and we usually get one big bag that we can at least do something for us and our neighbors. You're welcome, neighbors. Right. So. And one bonus tip. Uh, uh, this jacket is a bonus yeah, tip. Yeah, that bo jacket is a bonus if tip. If you're in Korea and you can find one of these really long jackets, you should get one because it keeps your legs warmer. But what I was going to say, I don't see a one around here that we can use as a demonstration. But if your car, if it's just freshly snowed and your car is covered in stuff. If you've got a bunch of this, if it's frozen, definitely take it off. But even if it's not. Yeah, try to. Take don't, that off. Yeah, don't just do like your, your windshields and call it good. If you've got a bunch of stuff stacked up on top of the car, try and wipe some of it off. Because um, I think in Korea, if somebody gets you on dash cam with like too much in an inordinate amount of or like chunks of debris coming off. coming off your car they can report you probably all right i think so that's our tips we're going inside where it's not quite so damn cold yeah. we're gonna go snuggle some dogs because mayhem has promised me to warm me back up right y'all like subscribe do, do the, the internet, internet stuff thing. we'll see you next time stay warm I've got enough friends, low places, baby.